Hey guys, welcome to another episode on my channel. So, as you know, in previous episode we started with subject of uh, ESP32 camera board. And in that very same episode I explained how to download code from uh, ESP32 cam uh, MJPEG2 uh, SD repository, what to edit, how to upload to your microcontroller, and how to receive data from your camera. But for this episode I intend something else, we are not going to do anything practical now. For this episode I intend to check on this repository in order to see what it has to offer. Because if you intend to build anything serious or anything at all using this repository, it's very important to know what to expect. Because what could happen? You could probably start building uh, some uh, feature that this repository already has. And in order to avoid wasting your energy, today we are going to read through this readme file. But what I usually do when I find some uh, new and interesting uh, GitHub repository, I check on license. And this project is licensed under GPL 3.0. And if you google GPL 3.0 explained, you're going to find uh, this web page. But first keep in mind that this is uh, not any kind of legal advice or anything like that. I'm just trying to explain these uh, regulations with my own words. And if you want to do anything serious, please talk with somebody educated in field of law, in order not to get yourself into trouble. So what says on the first line? Anyone can copy, modify and distribute this software. This is self-explanatory. But if you distribute this software to somebody, you have to include this license and copyright notice with every single distribution. You can use this software privately, you can use this software for commercial purpose, that is really good to know. But if you build your entire business uh, based on this code, you're risking open sourcing the whole code base. And this part is important only for those who want to build entire business based on this uh, code. And if you want to edit this code, uh, you must to indicate changes that you made. And by the way, any modification uh, must be distributed uh, with the same uh, license, GPL version 3. In line 8, uh, we can read that this software is provided without any warranty. And in line 9, the software author or license cannot be held liable for any damage inflicted by the software. Uh, if you understand this part, let's see what else we can have in here. Well, according to what it says, uh, this camera board supports a lot of additional features. We can attach a motion detector sensor to it. Uh, we could uh, attach a microphone. We also have telemetry recording, uh, remote control, and we can also use it with uh, telegram or email. Remote uh, NVR is also available, and if you don't know NVR, it's actually a system for multiple cameras. These are usually very serious uh, surveillance systems, so by using this code, your camera could easily become part of one of these. We could store our files to FTP and uh, we could also download it from uh, our browser. We can also use MQTT and we have support for a lot of uh, peripherals. We can use it with machine learning and we could uh, also attach uh, multiple uh, ESP32 camera boards to the same system. Well, of course you understand that you can easily build some of these features yourself. But why doing such a thing when uh, this project already contains those elements? And this Two lines are uh, really interesting. It says that uh, my ESP32 camera board uh, cannot support all of these features, mainly because of performance. And for better experience, it's suggesting uh, some of ESP32 S3 camera boards. All right, let now let's see what else we can find in here. Well, this is interesting part. And this table is for ESP32 uh, cam boards and here you can see that if you are using frame size of uh, 96 x 96 uh, with this usually, usual camera OV2640, you can expect uh, 50 frames per second. This fourth column, uh, detection time in milliseconds. It's important if you are using motion sensors or uh, phase detectors or something like that. And what is important to say, this third column is actually a uh, maximum frame per second for this board. This frame per second, 50, it's uh, actually what uh, your uh, camera may supply. But after processing, this is what you are going to get as final result. And of course, if you are using better board, you are going to get better results. 
So better board or smaller resolution, it's up to you. In uh, part design, you can see uh, that uh, this application is based on Arduino camera web server. But this project is actually uh, independent. And in here, in second paragraph, you can see that ESP Cam module has uh, four megabytes of uh, PS RAM, uh, while on uh, ESP32 S3, you are going to see eight megabytes of PS RAM. And of course, this memory is used to process your videos and many other things. And of course, for that reason, ESP32 uh, S3 has a much better performance. And in this third paragraph, it's saying uh, how your videos are named. So we have first uh, four digits for year, second two digits uh, for month, third uh, two uh, digits uh, for uh, day, then we have uh, hours, uh, minutes and seconds. Next part, it's frame size, like in this case, you see we have uh, 2020, uh, first month, uh, January 30, evening, 8 o'clock, 10 minutes and 15 seconds. We have a VGA uh, size and duration of video is 15 seconds. And now I'm going to plug SD card that I uh, used uh, to record my videos, to store my videos into my computer to show you what we have, how that actually looks. Okay, this is this document. And uh, this uh, last file, it's uh, from previous episode. So it was uh, created uh, year uh, 2024, month 3rd, day 32. It's evening 6 o'clock, 6.15. It's recorded with SVGA quality and it's around 20 seconds long. I'm going to play it. You see, it's test video. Not the best one, okay. And now let me show you properties of this video, video properties. So dimensions, it's uh, 800 by 600, video codex uh, JPEG and 20 frames per second. So uh, we have uh, SVGA 20 frames per second. Let me close this, let's get back to this table, SVGA, 20 frames per second. So this data table is completely correct. So as I said, with SVGA, we are getting 25 uh, frames per second uh, from the camera, but as output, we are getting only 20 frames per second. Okay, let's see what else we are going to find in here. And if you have microphone connected to your board in order to record the audio, your file name is going to have this underscore S attached. But if you have also telemetry, you are going to get uh, underscore M at the end of file name. And in this next part, you are going to see instructions for uh, installation. We already did that in my previous episode. But the only thing that I uh, forget to mention is that uh, when you first time uh, install this code, you are going to access it through access point. So you are going to get a new Wi-Fi with name of ESP Cam uh, MJPEG. You are going to connect to it and then you are going to uh, check uh, with your browser for this web address. And in there you are going to provide uh, your SSID data in order to connect to your network. Then you are going to restart your camera board and you are ready to use it. And if you access your camera board uh, through uh, ESP uh, CAN Wi-Fi, you are going to see that by using it you are going to be uh, able to uh, update code uh, for your camera by using OTA Upload tab. So let's see what else we have in here. Uh, we are going to cover this part in uh, upcoming episodes. And in here talks about uh, tweaks of your camera that you can do through this application. Let's see what else, what else we can see. In here tells you how to uh, connect your motion detector sensor and how to enable it. And don't worry, in upcoming episodes we are going to cover all of these subjects like uh, FTP, Telegram uh, and many other things. Uh, in here we are talking about uh, motion detector with camera. But keep in mind, don't even try these things uh, with uh, ESP32. For this, uh, use better board, uh, some of uh, ESP32 S3 boards. 
audio recording also audio recording it's actually a great feature but it's also hard to do with uh, ESP32 not that you cannot attach a microphone you see in here it says uh, that you can uh, attach microphone to ESP32 by using I2C but you are actually going to get very bad quality so forget about this part except if you don't have this better board so ESP32 S3 okay MQTT we are going to cover this part in some of upcoming episodes uh, port forwarding this could be really interesting in order to uh, access your camera from outside world from the internet but only if your router has public IP otherwise this is not going to work for you in here uh, we have uh, information about uh, telemetry recording and in order to use telemetry we are going to uh, edit a telemetry.cpp file and of course this is going to be explained in some of upcoming episodes uh, telegram we are also going to have uh, one episode dealing uh, with this subject remote control only with better boards of course if you are using ESPS3 this might be wonderful feature and we are going to cover that uh, subject too but if you are using ESP32 don't bother with it machine learning also only uh, with uh, better boards uh, camera hub uh, this is actually quite easy thing to use with this feature not only that you can uh, see image from one of your camera through your web browser you could actually add multiple cameras to very same web page and stream to NVR as I said NVR uh, it's a system for surveillance it could contain huge amount of cameras and we could easily add our ESP32 uh, camera image to this system so this is all for now in upcoming episodes we are going to cover these subjects uh, in uh, more details so if you want to know more about this project and how to use your uh, esp32 uh, camera stay tuned and uh, see you in next episode